Welcome to Music Student 101. Are you happy with your voice? If you use it regularly, you'll want to take good care of it. And now, the voices of your hosts, Jeremy Burns and Matthew Scott Phillips. Hey, Matt. Hey, Jeremy. How is your voice today? Uh, it, well, it's higher than I like, which is normal. Uh-huh. It's especially when you hear it on the recording. Right. Oh, gosh, I hate this out of my own voice. And <laughs> two years of doing a podcast, I still, you know, wince every time I hear myself speak. <laughs> it's, it's way too high, and it's got way too much of a southern accent. But As do I, as do I. But um, I have to wonder how my voice would be right now and how your voice would be if we were as good about taking care of our voices as we're going to suggest some of our listeners do. It would certainly be a lot better, I do believe. I think so, too. But that's okay, because maybe we will be inspired by this episode to uh, to uh, honor some of these tips and ideas. I, I certainly hope so. Yes, sir. Um, so that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about your voice, uh, how to take care of your instrument, part two. Part two. Part one, we covered strings and had a good time during that. Yes, I remember. And um, we're going to spend, we're going to talk about some listeners. We're going to read some listener mail. Yes, which I'm, is always fun. I'm going to talk about the anatomy a little bit uh, of the voice and the voice box and all PG those rated, I assume. Yes, very much. <laughs> <clears throat> all above the, uh, above the neck. Uh, all above the neck. <laughs> and, uh, and then we're also going to talk a little bit. We're going to have you cover some cool tips on uh, how to take care of your voice and some bad some bad practices. Some, some do's and don'ts. Do's yeah. and don'ts. So, Matt, I'm, yes, I'm going to give your voice a little break. Okay. Remember how you used to have to read all the long ones? Yeah. <laughs> used to? Yeah. <laughs> As in up until last podcast? <laughs> yes. Uh, well, you're going to have the first one. You're going to have the new review. Oh, awesome. Okay. So this new review, five stars, uh-huh. uh, from Ted and Rich from Canada, says, I need this badly. Awesome material. See? They don't have to all be that long. <laughs> they don't have to be a short and sweet and to the point, and I love it. And we got the five stars. Uh, thank you so much, Ted and Rich. Uh, we are so glad to be of service. Uh, I think a lot of people need this badly. We were kind of just talking about that before mm-hmm. we sat down to record, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So, good yeah. review and no, B- no side BS. <laughs> not At least not in this review. Now, we can side BS all you want. Well, we'll have an opportunity next because I'm going to have you, uh-huh. even though I just said that. Read, yeah, read the, uh, tease. The, now I get to read the long one, don't but, I? But it's not because you're so much, I mean, it is because you're so much more of an efficient reader. <laughs> but in this case, I'm trying to divvy up the speaking so ah. that we can best preserve our voices. And there's a method to this madness. Yes, there's a method to this madness. <clears throat> All I'm right. Well, let, let's healthy. check this out. We have a new Patreon patron. Yes, we do. Uh, by the name of Francis Vassallo. Uh-huh. Who is out in Sacramento. Right. And uh, having moved there a couple of years ago from San Francisco, uh, Francis says, Music is something that I have enjoyed my whole life, but never did much to learn. Anyway, after moving, I also started taking music classes at Sacramento City College. Oh, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. This semester, I am taking third semester music theory. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Yeah. And introduction to recording techniques. Very nice. Classes we both took. Back in the day. Yes, we did. Um, That's how I met you, wasn't it? The uh, recording tech class. Was that it, really? I think so. We had different theory courses. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so there you go. Um, About two to three months ago, I had the idea to search for a music theory podcast, and I was so fortunate to find Music Student 101. Your podcasts are fantastic and reinforce what I am learning in class. Oh, that's great. That's uh, that's exactly what we want to do, right? Yes, sir. Sometimes when I'm thinking about something, I have to say to myself, let's see, did I learn that in class or from the podcast? (laughs) Or most likely both. Yeah. Yeah. And yes, I have told my instructor and classmates about your podcast. As for instruments, I do have a nice digital piano, graded hammer keys, etc. That's good. Those those graded keys are important. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I try to practice every day uh, just using the standard books like Alfred's and Jane Bastian. 
Oh, and I think that maybe once or twice you and Matt have mentioned about playing the bass guitar. Have we ever mentioned that, Jeremy? You know, I I do have some cobwebs up in the old brain, but I think somewhere back of, of all these episodes, this is like 65 or something. Yeah, 66, something. I'm sure we've mentioned it. We maybe mentioned it once or twice or 65 times. Or... <laughs> Francis laughs because he knows us all too well. Yes, he does. <laughs> Well, last November, I did buy a Fender Precision Bass and Amp. I have been using TalkingBass.net for my lessons, and I am quite satisfied with the content. Hmm. Yeah, interesting. Have to check it out, huh? Yeah, yeah. I am pretty open about musical tastes. That's always a good thing. Yeah. Uh, since taking a musical survey course about a year ago, I have begun to listen to more classical music. Oh, excellent. However, I grew up during the New Wave era, so a lot of the British bands such as Tears for Fears, Depeche oh, Mode, oh. oh, Depeche Mode, oh, I remember Depeche Mode, Level 42 have always been my favorites. Yeah, I feel you. Yeah. And now that I am learning the bass guitar, I watch the amazement, I watch with amazement the playing of Mark King. Yeah, I think we all watch it with amazement. Mark King from Level 42. Yeah. That song, Lessons in Love, I think is one that they made famous. But uh, apparently his style was very slappy and very mm -hmm. intricate with a lot of 64th notes and polyrhythms and yeah. techniques. Uh, he did things that you wouldn't think possible with somebody slapping the bass guitar. Yeah. You know, and, and so, uh, yeah, he, he was pretty incredible. Oh, Best... spe speaking of bassists, uh, you know... Um, Tears for Fear is their bass player, Kurt, uh, Kurt Smith. Uh -huh. He was also uh, something to behold. Yes, he was. Good, clean tone, yes. strong, fat bass line. Yes, he was. And I, and I love these bass players who play in bands that aren't necessarily famous for their bass players. Yeah. You know, I mean, like Primus is famous for Les Claypool, Everyone, right? Everyone, yes. Red Hot Chili Peppers, Flea, you know. Pretty uh, significant. Yeah, but uh, I, I, I really... Uh, I really have a soft spot for these really good bass players that play in bands that are not known for having a good bass player necessarily, but they do have a good bass player, and it's, it's just it's just a sight to it. These guys are artists, you know. They they play the bass line that the song needs. Yep. And and that's uh, that's great to hear. And they and they expect nothing in return, and that's just <laughs> part of being a bass player. Yeah, being a bass player. Yeah. <laughs> is, uh, yeah. Absolutely. So, best regards, and thanks again for the great podcast. And thank you so much, Francis, for your support and for your kind words. We will endeavor to to uh, live up to uh, to what uh, to to the positive experience you've been getting in the future. Oh, and Francis would be impressed with you, Matt, because I always ask our listeners how to pronounce their name. <laughs> and just by looking at this, you would assume maybe Francis Vasalio, because when you see the double L, you yeah, think the yeah. Y sound. <clears throat> in, Span I, in the Spanish. I might should have assumed that. <laughs> no, no, because um, he's actually a of Italian descent, so you got it right on, on the nail. Yeah, see, the there head. you go, yeah. And as Jeremy knows, I've studied Italian, yes, the, the Italian language, and and um, there are many uh, Italian-Americans in my life whom I know and love, so I and, think I just naturally said Vasallo. <laughs> yeah, and I'm 50% fi of that, so... Uh, yes, he is, yeah. So thank you, fratello. Yeah, indeed. Um, um, uh, grazie mille. Yeah. So, yeah, so there is Francis. Okay. And now I'm going to rest my voice. Rest your voice. <clears throat> I'm clearing my throat, which is we're going to find out is very bad for your voice. <laughs> rest your voice and I shall read this listener mail, okay? Okay. This is John Shemek, uh, John Shemek from Lyons, Colorado. He also gave us a nice PayPal donation, I should mention. Thank you, John. He said no need for... Uh, you know, no need to mention that, but we <laughs> but are going to mention gonna, it. We're going to, anyway. Of course we're going to mention it. <laughs> but thank you for your humble, your humbleness there, buddy. Um, he found us on Spotify looking for ear training and jazz podcasts. He says, John says, I mostly stick to steel guitar, pedal, or dobro, and play reverby rock as well as bluegrass. Mm. Reverby rock. What do you think? I wonder if that's like the kind of Johnny Cash, dun -dun 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 kind of fast kind of rockabilly i was wondering if it was that or if it was more um more sort of that modern ambient stuff in which they use a lot of reverb you know yeah uh that's kind of what sprang to mind to me but you know you know pink floyd david gilmore had a real good slow kind of yeah like, reverby sound very yeah. beautiful singing mm -hmm. that he did with his guitar anyways um maybe he can follow up on that um Bluegrass, you know, I'm always a big fan. I've oh, been a yeah, big fan. We're, we're big bluegrass fans. He continues, <clears throat> I've been trying to get started on jazz, so I'm trying to get a handle on that side of theory. I've been pondering taking a course on theory at the college, but I'm 42 now and pretty busy with kids. Um, so when I found this, I was pretty psyched. 
but hey, I'm 42 now, <laughs> and I got a kid. <laughs> so we understand. We understand. Um, I'm happy we have this too. <laughs> yeah. He says, I did sign up for Musical U after hearing you guys mention it, and I brought one of the ear training programs. But Excellent. in the end, I just listen and re-listen and play around with the concepts, which is actually pretty cool too. You know, yeah. Musical U is a really good service, um, and they have a very in-depth ear training and mm -hmm. scale recognition courses, so mm -hmm. it's yeah. worth checking out. Definitely. But they also had their podcast, which um, is very helpful. You know, to oh, yeah, to. yeah. Absolutely. Good friends of ours. Indeed, um, they are. So that's cool. And he says, uh, I'll likely be donating again soon, as I've really appreciated both what and how you guys cover this stuff. Oh, that's excellent. Well, thank you so much, John, uh, for your support and for uh, for everything. Uh, yeah, I, we, we love these listener mails so much. Absolutely. You know, just uh, so, so keep them coming. If you guys don't enjoy this, just know we're doing it for us. You can always fast forward <laughs> through the first 20 minutes. But there's, there's some good stories, and everyone shares very similar struggles when it comes to growing up as a musician. They do. They really, really do. And, and, they, and there is definitely good, uh, good stuff in here. Uh, I, I imagine some people do uh, fast forward through the first 20 minutes. And, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and that's okay. That is totally fine. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, we, uh, we're, we're beginning to get a little bit of a rapport with some of our regular listeners that is fun. And like you said, yeah, um, if you struggle with... Uh, concept in music theory, uh, the overwhelming likelihood it is the overwhelming likelihood is someone else out there also struggles with that concept. So, uh -huh. so you came to the right place. Mm, indeed. Welcome. All right, Matt. Let me uh, throw a little stat on you. Okay. Did you know that around seven million Americans have some manner of vocal or voice disorder? Seven million. That's a lot. Yeah. That's like twice our seven times our city. Yeah. Birmingham. <laughs> yeah. God, can you imagine? Wow. You know, many of these can be avoided by properly taking care of your voice. Uh -huh. Many of these issues. Um, and this is not just for singers, by the way. No, this is for anyone. I mean, you got cheerleaders. You've got coaches. Mm -hmm. You got any fans. F podcasters. Podcasters. <laughs> anyone at a sporting event, for sure, you have to uh, yell. Yep, yep. People who work in loud environments, uh, construction. Mm -hmm, um, mm hmm because you have to yell over loud things. Exactly, yeah. Bartenders. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Patrons at bars. Patrons at bars. And film and television, we have a guy called the AD, the assistant director. Uh -huh. And the director basically just sits there and tells the AD what, what he wants. And the AD yells it to everybody. <laughs> and he's got to do that for 12 hours a day. Wow. Uh, drill sergeants come to mind. <laughs> do they still scream uh, like they do on TV at the... I, I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know either. I just, you know, I mean, memories of Gomer, Gomer Pyle. <laughs> Pyle! Pyle! Drill yeah. sergeants are the reason I'd... One didn't of the reasons join the army. Didn't want to. Between Gomer Pyle and Full Metal Jacket, oh. I just assume boot camp is getting yelled at a lot. Yep, that was a bad one, Full Metal Jacket. Ooh. Yeah, I yeah. mean, great movie, but great movie, yeah. Mean old drill sergeant. Mean old drill sergeant. Well, before we get into this, I want to cite a few sources. Okay. Um, first off, about four years ago, I started taking vocal lessons uh, just to kind of find my voice and take it a bit more seriously. Mm -hmm. I spent, um, well, maybe three years. I spent about a year and a half with uh, Haley Evans Skipper, who is now in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. She was she mainly taught children, and she said, uh, she was a, friend, a mutual friend of ours, so I mm -hmm. approached her, and she was like, well, you know, I mainly teach children. And I was like, that's okay, because I could be kind of a child. <laughs> and it Don't worry, I'm very, very immature. <laughs> very immature. So we had a great little relationship, and I learned a lot of cool techniques and, and things to take care of, things to notice mm -hmm. while you're singing and trying to take care of your voice. She moved to Atlanta, and then I started taking from uh, my friend Ryan Barnes over at Mason Music. Mm -hmm. Now, Ryan, he increased my range by about a minor third on both ends. Uh, that's impressive. Yeah, I mean, in about a year that I worked with him, I've had fantastic results, oh, yeah. and he has also had some really great uh, input on how to take care of your voice. Yeah, so yeah. So I'm going to be using a lot of the knowledge I gained from them, as well as a few little things I've checked out. Of course, EncyclopediaBritannica.com. Yep. You know. um, there's also a great little article called um, by the Voice Foundation at VoiceFoundation.org called oh, okay. The Anatomy and Physiology of Voice Production. Very nice. That's where we're going to learn about all this, these body parts. <laughs> And then we'll have a link to this on our website as well. And then we have LiveScience.com for uh, 10 tips for a healthy voice. Is it Live Science or Live Science? That's a good question. That's a very good question. Live Science, Live Science. That happened with the band, you know. 
They <laughs> they named their band Live, but every re- uh, radio DJ in, in the country just called them Live. Dude, you're kidding me. I, I kid you not. That's, <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah. You blew my mind every episode at least, at least <laughs> once. They were just like, okay, I guess we're just going to be live. They did, Yeah, they just kind of had to go with it. But uh, they originally conceived, at least the story I heard, was they originally conceived that the, the name of their band was Live. God. But uh, every radio DJ in the in the country said live, so oh. they they became live. Interesting. Well, yeah. whatever whatever this article is, uh, whatever the L I V E Science dot com is, <laughs> just type that in and look it. Yeah, up. just type that in, you'll find it. <laughs> okay, here we go. Now we're going to kind of discuss this in order of function from the from the first breath to the production of the vocal cord. Okay. Production of voice and song. Right. <clears throat> in order of function, there's three main systems involved, okay? Mm-hmm. You got the air pressure system. Mm-hmm. This involves the lungs, the mm-hmm. diaphragm, chest muscles, and ad- abdominal muscles. Mm-hmm. Next, we have the vibratory system, mm-hmm. which is the voice box, the glottis, and the vocal folds. Yeah, we'll talk yeah. more in depth about each function in yeah, each part the, here. The part that actually acts like a set of chords. Yeah, uh, that, you know. almost like a reed. I don't know. It's it's a, it's a funny function, the way the vibrations happen from bottom to top. Yeah. Um, it's kind of unlike a lot of instruments that can really uh, duplicate that. Yeah, you know? very unique. I always thought of it as kind of strings, but you know, what do I know? Yeah, well, it's um, it's more the airflow that enclosing, opening and closing of this glottis that makes the vibrations. So, ah, yeah. I mean, it still functions yeah. in the same way a vibration would make right, that. Yeah. But lest we get ahead of ourselves. Lest we get ahead of ourselves. And then finally we have, so we had air pressure system, we had the vibratory system, and then mm-hmm. we have the resonating system. Yeah which is the throat and oral cavity and the nasal passages. And I would imagine that resonating system, if I were just to take a guess, is the one that is probably the most ignored by by people. Yeah. Yeah. But it certainly colors your voice or defines the tone color or the timbre. Right, Each yeah. individual voice. Yeah, yeah. Now, I <clears throat> would have expected a fourth system that I didn't see in this article, but I'll go ahead and... Dr. Jeremy's going to go ahead and make up his own thing here. Awesome. The fourth system I would have said would have been, because none of these account for articulation. Mm-hmm. I propose a fourth system, articulation, because you have the tongue, tongue and the teeth. And, and the, the teeth and the lips yeah, and everything uh-huh. that helps you to shape and speak words. Right, yeah. Or sing words in a song. Right, yeah, yeah. Anyways. I, I agree, that should probably be there. Well, we'll talk a little bit about that too. So here's the process, okay? Okay. So everything starts in the lungs. Mm-hmm. You know, like, like a bellows, your lung draws air in. With the help of the diaphragm and chest muscles. Right. They can sort of contract on the lungs and and then, and it, then open. And, they, they, op- they contract and your lungs open, then they, or I guess they expand and your lungs open. Yeah. How, you know, and, then, and then so forth. Your lungs close. It blows another puff of air out via the trachea, also known as the windpipe. Right. Um, it's kind of the uh, pipe between your lungs and the outside world. Mm-hmm. Now, um... So if you're, if you're kind of looking at yourself or if you're a frontal view of somebody, the trachea is actually kind of in the front part. Mm-hmm. The esophagus, which swallows the food, is more towards the back. Right. You know, um, at the top of the trachea, we have the vocal mechanism, which consists of the following things in order of a, from, from lungs up. Okay? Right. Okay. You got your vocal cord, your vocal folds, or your vocal cords. Mm-hmm. And this is a folded soft tissue that's the main vibrating component. Yeah. It consists of a cover, a vocal ligament, and the body. Okay. The body is actually the, the meaty part that's connected to the inside of your uh, ah, trachea. Ah, you know? okay. The folds themselves being very thin as they get to the, the fold. Yeah. And there's actually a number of them from bottom to top. There's a small number of folds, so mm. it's kind of like a progression of folds moving upward. Huh. Yeah, and um, at the top of this is the glottis, which is the opening between the vocal folds. Actually, this is just part of the vocal cords. Mm. The glottis is known as the opening. Uh, so the glottis closes for swallowing and sound production, and then it opens for breathing. Right. Uh, the epiglottis also helps, which is a little bit higher up. A little flap of skin that closes over the wind so you can yeah. swallow the food. Yeah, right, right, yeah. Um, so there's kind of like a process uh, when, when, you're, when you're about to sing. Uh, the vocal folds move to the midline, so that, you know the muscles kind of prep them to move to the midline. And then a column of air opens the folds at the bottom and moves to the top of the vocal folds. There's a low pressure pocket that follows close to the lower folds, followed by the upper folds. So the lower folds open up, 
the opening moves to the upper folds, the lower folds close down after it due to a change in air pressure. Yeah, okay. This is known as the Bernali effect. Yeah, so sort of like a kind of doing the wave kind of yes, thing. Yes, exactly. Do, yeah. I wish the people could see it, but it's not <laughs> unlike the Wayne's World <laughs> yeah. diddly, diddly, diddly. kind of butterfly hourglass looking wave kind of thing <laughs> happening there. <laughs> what was that, the augmented? Uh, That's a whole tone whole scale. Tone uh, scale. Or actually more. That's the sound of what it looks like when your vocal folds are doing their thing. <laughs> so again, finally, uh, the air moves up, and then the closure at the top of the folds cuts off the air, and then the column releases the puff of air. I see. This is one cycle, okay? Uh-huh. This happens many, many times a second. Each time this happens is one vibration or one hertz. Oh, wow. So men speak on average in the 110 hertz range, which is mm. A2. Yeah, yeah. About... A2, Oh, actually, sorry, little, that little. was A3. About... Yep. Yeah. That's about yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, that's... Uh, maybe a little higher than that sometimes. Maybe. That's, that's about... That's about right. Yeah. I think I'm a little higher. Uh, <laughs> I think my voice is a little higher than that, too. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Women... On average, they um they're, they're they're kind of in around the 180 to 220 hertz range. Mm -hmm. 180 is kind of like F3, and then A3 is a yeah, 220. Yeah, so like so just a little higher, not that much. Not much difference, higher. Difference really. And then children on average are uh, 300 cycles, 300 hertz. Yeah. 300 vibrations per second. Yes, and if you remember our um uh, episode on uh. Music Tech, we covered this a little bit, right? With the hertz and the frequencies. And the overtone series. And the overtone series, yeah. Yes, we did. And uh, so that's around D4 for the kids. So, yeah. Moving so up to that next up, D. Kind of right there, yeah. Yeah, kind of a childish range if you think of. Absolutely. So um, this is all, again, happening in the vocal folds. This yeah. is causing the actual sound. Now, when you move up from there, above all that, is the larynx. This is the cavity above your wind, windpipe also known as the voice box, I mm -hmm. guess, to some. So the larynx is a cavity above your windpipe, also known as the voice box. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, it's mainly designed to help you shape the sound of your of your voice. Yeah, okay. So it's a bit of a resonating chamber. Right, yeah. Kind of acts in the same way as a resonating chamber. It focuses the sound, and if you do it properly, part of singing properly is kind of being able to focus the sound from your larynx upward to a point where it also hits your resonating chambers, yeah. which are your forward sinuses and then yeah. your sinus, the sinal cavity, yeah. your mouth cavity, right, and all those other little things. Right, yeah. Yeah, I've heard singers say, you know, like if, you're, if your larynx is closed off, you get kind of a pinched sound. Yes. Yeah. Kind of. Kind of. Uh, yeah. <laughs> We're going to make a lot of fun. This is a good thing that this is actually an audio podcast <laughs> because there, there's going to be some funny faces that are going to be made to make some of these noises. That we have to have for our proper. <laughs> a lot of good, training. funny singer faces. Yes. It's going to be funny anyway, just hearing us going. Ah, <laughs> ah, ah, ah. Yeah. Okay, now, so let's talk about um, how spoken word and singing, now that we're kind of into the vibration and the, and the mm. voice forming, um, there's kind of three different things that, that make this happen. First off is the voiced sounds, you know, right. the basic sounds produced by the vocal folds vibrating. Uh huh, right. Then you have the resonance. Again, the sound is made louder and modified by the throat, mouth cavity, and the nasal passage. Uh, that's, again, what gives our voices their unique timbre or sound. Mm -hmm. The reason you sound like you do, the reason I sound like I do. Yeah. The reason we're all vocal snowflakes in our own way. And isn't the human brain just amazing to be able to distinguish Yeah. You know, between two people whose uh, frequency of their speaking is in about the same place, mm -hmm. and, you know, their, uh, their larynx is both a normal larynx, you know, nothing yeah. remarkable about it, you know, and, and yet they can sound different enough and we can distinguish, you know, this is one person speaking and this is another person speaking. Because as yeah. the sound travels and bounces around within this larynx, certain overtones are activating more so in other people than they are for other right, people. Right, yeah. So it's yeah. kind of those overtones that give you your own sound. Yeah, the same principle by which you can tell the difference between a violin or a flute, even if they were playing the same note. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And finally, the uh, third thing that this is all the result of is articulation, which we talked about earlier. Right. Being able to shape words and vowels and consonants with your tongue, your lips, teeth, mm -hmm. all those great things. Yeah. And this is how we shape vowels and consonants. Exactly. Or swallow vowels if you're from Alabama. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
Which we do. Which we, which do. we yeah, which we do. So um, we're going to cover a few warm ups because uh, that's about all a part of the good practices. Mm hmm. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about some of these th things you can do. Okay. And then we're going to give a couple of quick examples. All right. And Matt, you get to play the vo voice teacher. Okay. Um, that's a role I'm not prepared for, but yeah. we will still do it. I will teach you how to play the voice teacher okay. based on what Ryan taught me and what Bailey taught me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So it's recommended, this is funny, start off your day with quiet humming and gently cooing. Cooing? What is cooing? I mean, babies like, coo. Like maybe like, yeah, kind of thing. Oh, that's kind of like bird chirping. That's, that's doves. <laughs> doves. That's doves cooing. Doves cooing. Okay. People cooing. I don't. I don't. If I have cooed, I don't know if I've cooed. <laughs> but look it Humming, up. Humming, on the other hand. <laughs> yeah. And now, starting off in the morning, um, not a lot of people are, really do this. They kind right. of jump right into it. I know my friend Brian Malloy, who plays the drums uh -huh, uh -huh. on our episodes. His mom was a screamer in the morning. Uh -huh. Brian, <laughs> David, Jerry. She'd yell at me, Jerry. I was like, Holy God, I'm being yelled at by someone else's mom. <laughs> Get down here. And uh, she did not coo, I don't think, in, in the morning. But a lot of parents yeah. are not doing this cooing thing in the morning. They're just right. getting everything together and yeah. trying to keep it together to get the yeah. kids out the door yeah, yeah, yeah. get to work. <laughs> so, um, But, hey, try that. That would be the first thing you want to do when you get up and you're moving towards the shower or whatever yeah. you do. Now, um, I recommend this while you're in the shower because not as many people are going to hear it if you're self-conscious about it. <laughs> But the tongue and lip trills are kind of an important part of um, teaching your voice how to develop consistent pressure. Mm -hmm. Because of what's happening, um, you have to have a certain amount of pressure to make this function happen. Mm -hmm. And if you raise it up too much, it'll tweak the function. It, 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 to keep it consistent, there has to be even pressure. And when you're mm -hmm. singing, you want to have an even pressure right, coming yeah. out. Right, yeah. You, you know, rather you go high or low. Ideally, the same amount. Uh, of pressure. Ideally, the same amount of pressure. So yeah, here's what so, you kind of yeah. do. Now, there's a great video that talks about this. Okay, but both of my teachers had me do this. Haley had me do more of a um, yeah. kind of a. Oh, okay. So yeah, that's kind of hard to do and keep singing notes. Well, there's things you have to do. You can't just. It's, yeah. It doesn't just come automatically. At first, you have to do things like Ryan had me kind of press. Press the bottom of my chin way up into uh -huh. the rest of my face. Uh -huh. Just smushed up your face. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then when your face is all smushed up, you go. <laughs> I still can't do it. <laughs> so that's one way to do it. But however, this is going to be a fun podcast. Yeah, it is. However, when I would do that, I would find, and this might be different for other people, but I found that I was tensing up my shoulders and my arms a lot. And so don't do that. So when you're tensing up your shoulders and arms, you're also kind of putting tension on your neck muscles and your larynx. Yeah. And that can restrict your range. Uh-huh, right. So what it's recommended, uh, This I saw this cool video by a guy named um, Dr. Daniel K. Robinson. Mm. He said there's a video on YouTube called Lip Trills, Are You Doing Them Right? I see. And he suggests okay. a method where you actually take both of your fingers and you brace the side of your, the corners of your lips. Okay. And you kind of use it to push in a little bit. And there's three sounds happening here. There's the wind. Yeah, okay. Blowing through. Now you put your lips together, you got to. <laughs> I'm just. <laughs> you got to work on this, Matt. I got to work on this. I'm just making, I'm just making. Silly noises. Silly noises, but yeah. But hey, this is not unlike air escaping from a balloon, you know, when you pull yeah. a balloon and the air escapes yeah, from it? Yeah, That's kind of maybe the closest representation of what the vocal cords are doing. Yeah, yeah. The third sound you're going to hear is you have to add a tone to it. So you got... Oh, okay. Hmm. So that's lip trills. And All this, right. This is actually a very good way to... Um, it's just good kind of throat therapy for one thing. Yeah. And uh, it's also a good way to work on having pressure, mm. you know, specific pressure. <laughs> we'll get it. We'll get it in a few episodes. Ah, uh, yeah. I'm going to have to practice, obviously. But of, the, of these three sounds, air, lips, and tone, you want your tone to be the loudest of all these. You want that to be the recon recognizable sound. Okay, yeah. That's probably what I wasn't doing. Mm-hmm. Again, tension in, in your neck and shoulders can hinder a good sound, so... 
Yeah. Your breath needs to be even and not too hard. Yeah, and I do a lot of tension in my shoulders. I've been to, when I'm conducting, my sh my I've been told my sh shoulders are up. Yeah, there's a lot of tension in. Whenever I'm like walking and the sun is behind me and I see my silhouette walking on the ground before me, I'm like, dude, yeah, you, you gotta lo loosen up a little bit. I need to uh, go to a massage therapist, I think, yeah. work on those shoulders. Yeah, that's just life. We that's, just kind of walk walk around with our shoulders hunched like we're about to have to fight somebody. Life makes just, you tense. <laughs> just, just barreling through, yes. So, it's just um, our natural stance now. Yeah. <laughs> Like everybody we meet, all right, how are you going to screw up what I'm trying to do here? <laughs> <laughs> it's just, uh... Other people's, uh, dis you know, other people's uh, ineptitudes make you tense. <laughs> yeah, just, uh... <laughs> <laughs> just give that old curmudgeonly walk. <laughs> well, that's not good for singing. So That's not good for That Try attitude it. about life probably isn't good for singing. <laughs> the hey, positive, positive attitude, positive outlook, and positive influence on the body. Yes, There's yeah. There's something to that psychosomatic thing. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, we're going to talk about warming up here. But if you're warming up... Um, involves scales or melodies, make sure you start simple. So you're just going to go up and down to five, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. maybe some arpeggios. Mm -hmm. And you kind of want to repeat these exercises a few times a day. Mm -hmm. Kind of keep the voice, keep the voice kind of going. Finally, at the end of the day, you want to end with similar exercises to those that you began with. Mm. The quiet humming, cooing, whatever the hell that is. Uh, okay. <laughs> so that's kind of an idea of, of a good daily kind of thing to do, mm -hmm. you know? Now, real quick, I want to show you a couple of warm-up examples, okay? Okay. So here's what I need you to do, Matt. Okay. We're, we're going to start off on C, just to give me a good good place to start off on. So you want, like, just a C chord? Yeah. So this first one's called Get It, Get It, Get It. Okay. And it's five, five, four, three, two, one. Oh, I hear these all the time coming from the offices of my vocal coach colleagues. Yeah. And so. so you'll play that. Yeah, and you'll play it once. You'll play the chord, and then we'll do it together. Okay. Get it, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. And then you're going to move up a half step. Uh, to C sharp. Get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. <laughs> I don't, I'm not getting it. <laughs> I'm getting it. Okay. Get it, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. Okay, yep. Yeah. Ideally in both octaves if you can. Get it, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. Exactly. And the idea is... And I heard you do this, and I've done this before. Uh, like, you kind of have a little kind of pre-note. Get it, get uh, it, Yeah, get I it. do. I, I do that, yeah. But you really want to try and jump straight to get, get it, it, get it, it. Get it, get it, get it, get it. Yep, and okay. then make those consonants kind of hard and make sure yeah. that the vowel lasts up until the very last second. Okay. So, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. Get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. Yep, and that's just five, four, three, two, one. So what yeah. he would do is, like, you would start me off doing that, and then you keep on moving up, 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 yeah. up, up. Get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. Get it, get it. You can do this in the shower without a piano. Get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. You did the end thing again. Get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. So that's get it. These are all designed to do different things. These are different consonant sounds. These are punching different vowels, and these are focusing different vowel sounds. Yeah, I already hear me not in uh, uh, not having good diction and kind of saying, get it. You know? Oh, I heard Get you. it, get it, get it, get it, get it. You know. I heard this about 10 times a day for about a year with Ryan. <laughs> yeah. So believe me, it's a very difficult <laughs> thing to get used to. He also said I sing with an Irish brogue. <laughs> which I wonder where that came from. I wonder where that came from. <laughs> the fact that I've played with Irish bands since 1999. Yeah, probably something like that. But when I would say land, I would say <laughs> Land. <laughs> I actually have an ear training student who she's kind of quit doing it now, but uh, she uh, um, her her parents are uh, Russian, uh -huh. and she she was born and raised here, so she speaks with zero accent mm -hmm. right up until she starts doing solfege, hmm. and, and then solfege so fa mi re do with a little bit of a Russian accent, which is just I think it's awesome, but <laughs> she's kind of stopped doing it now now that she's. You know, got more practice at it. You kind of miss it, don't you? <laughs> I kind of miss it a little. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's get it, get it, get it. That's just five, four, three, two, one. Five, four, three, two, one. Next one, uh, one I had to do a lot of was called Doug Under Does His Work. And it's da, Doug, uh, give me that C one more time. Give me that C. Doug, Doug Under Does His Work. 
or um, I think it's a it's straight up the scale. Oh. Doug under does his work. Yep. Oh, okay. So Doug. there's a Doug under does or it's Doug. it's kind of the it's Doug under does his work. Okay. Doug under does his work. And then move it up. Um. Doug under does his work. That one's easier for me for whatever reason. Yep. Doug under does his work. <laughs> I keep wanting to put the two notes on Doug rather than on under. Uh huh. Doug under does his work. Now the idea for this is the same syllable that you're using for Doug shouldn't uh -huh. be the same syllable that you use for under uh -huh. and does. Uh, Doug, uh, 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 uh. Doug under does his work. Yep, and you had to make a funny face to do that. I had to make it. Uh, I wish they could have seen that. <laughs> uh, they're having to hear me sing. They've suffered enough. This takes a lot of thought, though. It does. Here's what you're doing. You're training muscles that you cannot really address. Yeah. If I want to work out my biceps, I'll pick up a weight and I'll do this over and over. Yeah, and over. because you have agency with your arms. You can yes. control. Yeah. So this is all just kind of having to go through all these processes to make teach your voice how to actually work properly. Yeah. Okay, one more. One more, because this is a little bit more involved. It's going to okay. be um, up, up, over the edge. Okay. Which is going to be one, five, three, eight. Five, five, three, one. Yeah. Five, three, yeah. Basically, five, three. you're outlining the arpeggio of the major Right, chord. right, yeah. And it's up, up. You ready? Yeah. Up. Uh, Wait, hold on. Okay. Uh, up, 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 over the, the edge. edge. And then I assume we're going to... Uh, up, 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 over the, the edge. edge. Keep doing that. Mm -hmm. up, 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 over the, the edge. edge. Yeah. And I can't remember uh, it's supposed to be the or the. I want to say the, it's the because the it's edge. over the. But anyways... These are all designed for the same purpose I was talking about. Yeah. These are three good kind of warm-ups that kind of cover most of the consonants and vowels. Right, yeah. S's, uh, pressure regulation. So you move up as high as you can go, and then you start moving down as low as you can go. Good ways to uh, train your voice. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's something else. That's challenging. It really is. I'm not I'm not going to kid you, man. Um, it, at one point, I think we're going to try and have Ryan, if we can, get him on the episode, and we, yeah. we're going to play back some of our lessons, and <laughs> it's uh, comedy truly ensues, yeah. trying to hear me be trained to sing properly. <laughs> oh, nice. All now, right. Aside from all of these cool warm-ups and kind of daily regimes we've discussed, yeah. I think there is some tips in general right. that yeah. I'm going to turn it over to you, our good okay. professor. Okay. Okay. Good practices, Good practices for any aspiring vocalist. Mm -hmm. Hydration. Uh, drink plenty of water. Mm -hmm. uh, all, uh, that's good for not just your vocal cords. It's good for your body. Good thing in general. Um, avoid caffeine and alcohol. Dope. Dope, yeah. I, I tell people a lot of times, caffeine is the only drug to which I am truly addicted. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. And buddy, I am. It, well. it, it, the, not a day goes by. <laughs> it could be so much worse, Matt. I suppose. I suppose. Um... Stick to water-based snacks, fruits, mm -hmm. right? uh, grapes, oranges, apples, you know, things like that. Uh, vegetables like bell pepper or celery yeah. uh, are, are good. Uh, drinking ginger tea can help your voice if it's in bad shape. Mm -hmm. uh, use honey instead of sugar if you can. That's kind of the going wisdom, I think. And then yeah. some people have mentioned uh, like a little bit of lemon juice in there. Yeah, yeah. But very little because really lemon mainly kind of dries out the throat. Kind of feels like it's an irritant, or, or, or maybe. Yeah, so I think if you're doing a maintenance thing, mm -hmm. you want to use the lemon. It's got vitamin C, pectin, calcium, magnesium, potassium. Right. yeah. All those things. But um, I wouldn't do it before you start singing it as part of your warm-up. I would nix the lemon. You yeah. Know? It's yeah. more about hydration. More about hydration than anything. Yeah. A friend of mine had some good advice, that uh, Dane Forsyth, who I played in Shillelagh Law, my first Irish band with. It was very. We, we were finding it a challenge to kind of stay... Keep our uh, <laughs> things together <laughs> in our uh, with people bringing us whiskey and beers the whole night. Yeah, so he the, said, hydration could be an issue. What you do is every for every pint of beer you drink, you have a pint of water. Simple yeah. as that. Yeah, Re replace everything that you take put in alcohol wise or coffee wise. Yeah, yeah, with a similar amount of water. Yeah, to even it out. Yeah, it's a good plan. Um, 
Fun fact about celery, you burn more calories chewing on it than you actually do ingesting it. So <laughs> so that you burn more calories chewing it than it actually has. Yeah. So, so you're negative calories. That's the negative calories <laughs> food. That's Unfortunately, hilarious. it is the least tasteful and most boring food. <laughs> unless you smack some peanut butter on it. Or, or dip it in ranch or something. Dip it in ranch, yeah. yeah. Then it's fine. Exactly. <laughs> so anyways. Uh, in, so anyways, also allow for vocal naps during the day, hmm. which is exactly what it sounds like. Uh-huh. Uh, find a quiet place where you don't have to speak too much. Yeah, um, spend your breaks there. If you're a teacher or a coach or somebody who speaks a lot, this uh-huh. is also good You know, to, to have a, f- a few minutes in the day when you're not talking. So, Matt, uh, this means that during your break you can't just jump right on the phone yeah, when you're teaching classes. It's not great. Uh-huh. And I, I have definitely had days where I was talking a lot. Mm-hmm. You know, over the course of the day, and and you could feel it. You could feel your voice kind of be exhausted. Mm-hmm. You know, a, a, after a few days, and and yeah, you can you can sort of feel when you need a vocal nap. When you just not talk and let it recuperate for a little while. Yeah. You know, at some point, I, I discovered the joys of playing music in class, and while it was playing, I could let them listen, and I could just kind of huh. not speak as much. Some classes, that's not that's not as uh, it's not as easy to do. So. That's, yeah. So you have like a little meditative moment for you and your students, kind of? Or, uh... <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's kind of cool. Uh, you know, you do what you can. <laughs> it's got multiple benefits, <clears throat> that does, but there you go. But I think about high school gym coaches yelling at people over the sound of basketballs bouncing on the ground and utility balls flying through yeah, the air. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All and these people. Yeah, take, have, it, have some time in your day where you don't have to do that. Mm-hmm. You don't have to yell or sing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've I've had I've known people to be on vocal rest where their vocal coach told them not to speak for a couple of days. Ah, yeah. Just shut up. Yeah, yeah. That's very uh, difficult for. I mean, some people. I think some of the people that talk the most, <laughs> and this is not by profession. This is just by who they are. Yeah, are not aware that they talk as much <laughs> as they do. It would be really hard for. The, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think it would be easy for me, but me too. <laughs> Um, I don't say anything unless it's profound, man. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> um, also, don't smoke. Mm-hmm. And let's be honest, uh, vocal shape is the is not even the best reason to never smoke. There's so many reasons to never smoke. Oh? Yeah. Well, lung cancer. Oh, yeah. yeah. Throat cancer. Throat cancer. That can ruin uh, yeah. your vocal game. Uh, contributes to obesity. Oh. You know, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, all, all, all sorts of reasons. Just don't smoke. This is widely proven to be a horrible idea, right? And as we know, that goes for cigarettes, uh, marijuana. Yeah. Anything you can. And now, marijuana, that oftentimes they'll have water bongs. Yeah. I'm, I imagine that filters a little bit, but. Uh, Replace what you take out. <laughs> the Music Student 101 does not condone. We do water not bong. condone the, the use of. Illegal substances for recreation. And, and crack and people who smoke crack and heroin and things like that. I yeah. can't even imagine what kind of chemical processes things are occurring. Are, and, and what that's doing to... Mess up those soft tissues, those delicate yeah. pink soft tissues within your... Yeah, within your throat. and wind, windpipe, yeah. Yeah, the, it, they are sensitive. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it doesn't take an expert to know that those, those things are sensitive. That you, you can mess them up. So carcinogens aside, when you're also, when you're taking a drag off a cigarette, you're inhaling, there's a hot rock at the end of your cigarette, Uh heat is getting thrown, uh, heat is going down. So that's not good for the hydration, that's not good for your muscles or tissue either. Right, yeah. Sadly. Sadly, no. another way. Sadly, no. Yeah. Um, This uh, uh, also, and one that is probably going to sound obvious to some, Mm -hmm. uh, try to avoid yelling or screaming a whole lot. Yeah. You have a tendency that's basically abusing your voice, you know. Mm-hmm. And I can see that if you think about, you know, what you were saying about the 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 way your vocal cords work, uh-huh. you know, and, Sl- and how they're kind of together. opening and closing. Yeah. You know, when you're um when you're yelling or screaming, you're pushing a whole lot of air through them, right? Yes. And so they're opening really really wide and mm-hmm. back and doing that really a whole lot. So you're really kind of stretching them out of shape. Yeah. To do that, you know, and, and you can totally lose your voice. I Absolutely. Mean, you can totally lose your voice doing that. Mardi Gras. Yeah. <laughs> Careful for Mardi Gras. Yeah, St. Patrick's Day. Yes, parades, yeah. parades. Yeah, man. Be uh, be careful, be careful. Um, 
if you are starting to feel or sound hoarse, that is a sign your vocal mechanisms have been irritated. Yeah. And maybe knock it off. Listen to your voice. <laughs> you listen to your voice. <laughs> listen to what your vocal cords are telling you. Yes. Uh, pay attention to your neck and throat muscles when you're singing. Make sure you're not straining them. You know, if they're starting to feel irritated, you know, it's probably because you're straining them. Yes. Yeah. And you should probably not do that. I have more funny faces for you, Matt. Okay. When you sing high, when people sing high, mm -hmm. they tend to, I don't know, automatically look up, raise their eyebrows, uh, and their uh, neck is kind of extended upwards. Uh -huh. When people sing low, they, they tend kind of to tend, make... Yeah, they bend their head down. You see how my eyebrows are... For, you know, my, and then I'm making a disciplinary <laughs> yeah, look. Uh -huh. Like you're about to yell at a kid. <laughs> and you look down. When you I wonder why that is. That's an interesting psychological little well, thing. Well, you know the baritone and the bass has always been the... Um, the foil in the operas, the bad yeah. guy. Yeah, oh, the evil guys. The evil yeah. guy. The hero has always been the tenor. Uh, yeah. So there's that. <laughs> there's that. Um, uh, but then, you know, if you look at, like, rock stars and things, people who are trying to sing at the top of their voice, they seem like their faces are squinting when they sing high. Yeah, and, and let, let it be said that not a lot, a lot of rock stars have proper technique. You know yeah, I mean? yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, they probably ought not be singing at the top of their ranges all the time like that. Possibly not. Well, I know that a lot of touring bands... Will actually down tune a couple of steps to do songs that yeah. they might have recorded once in the studio. Yeah, but yeah. But they want to do it over and over every night. They have to tune it down to be able to hit that note every time. Yeah. So that yeah. does happen. Wow, so much stuff to consider. So yeah, so that those those kind of make making these different looking up, looking down. Yeah. Tense, tense, being tense. Yeah. You feel like if you sing higher, you have to put more strain, more more on your vocals. Yeah. But you really don't. Yeah. Okay. But it's hard to get out of that. Yeah, it's hard to get out of that. Trying to scream the highest note thing. Acquainting yeah. pressure differences with louder sound or higher sound is something you don't really want to kinda do. Kind of bad. Yeah. Also bad is those natural faces, I would think. Because <laughs> then Ryan always knows, oh, okay, I see what you... you know, I see you making that face. You're singing too. Yeah. He actually had me go and look in the mirror. Say he, there's a mirror in his, in his... And I would have to look at myself in the mirror, which was very painful. Oh, to I bet. squish my face up and look at myself looking like a fool. Yeah, this is not mirror. for people with low self-esteem. Or, or any kind of uh, self-consciousness. Self, self-consciousness, yeah, yeah, wow. <laughs> wow, that's that's funny. Um, what else you got, man? What else I got? Also, uh, pay attention to just how you speak every day. You know, a lot of singers don't really consider this, but try to allow for more breath uh, flow when you speak and try to avoid the, the vocal fry. The vocal fry. The vocal fry. Which has become a thing. It has become a thing, yeah. And it has become a thing in radio where you hear the vocal fry. And if you listen to some of our earlier podcasts, you'll hear me you doing a lot of that. You'll hear the vocal fry. Probably some of our podcasts up until recently has, has got plenty of that. Which, again, is why, Matt, we are, we're seating ourselves about 10 feet away from each other so we can still kind of yell across the room. Yeah, and avoid the... Yeah. Now... Actually, the, yeah. Sometimes, okay. So, the when I'm brilliant production of Jeremy Burns, ladies and gentlemen, hey, he's thought of everything. Thought of just about everything. <laughs> when I, whenever I'm kind of reading something that is not as that I, I don't quite grasp, or I'm kind of just reading off the page, I kind of end up doing this kind of thing. Kind of fry a little, yeah. But when I get excited about something that I really know about, I kind of pipe up. And as you're hearing me now, is really how we're supposed to be kind of speaking in general, right? Yeah. You know. Yeah, you know. There's a lot of controversy over that whole because some people in podcasts and in radio they feel like the vocal fry is. Annoying. Yes. Um, they uh, people have written into podcasts like This American Life saying, mm. you know, we love your podcast, but it's just so annoying the way that person talks. Mm -hmm. And it, it's some people feel like it's kind of turning into a generational thing. Yes. Well, like well, like younger younger people, it doesn't bother them as much, and they're they're prone to sort of talk that way a little more. Uh huh. Because there there are differences in the way people will speak, even from generation to generation. This is true. Well, there's like old people who sort of grow up, you know, grew up in the golden age of radio. You know, <laughs> kind of kind of want to hear that more. And before that, there was a transatlantic accent. There was a transatlantic accent. For our boys overseas. <laughs> this is such a fun podcast. This is, is the most fun I've, I've had in like a couple of podcasts. Now. Hey. And I, just, I was just vocal frying at the end of that sentence too. So now I'm all <laughs> self-conscious about it. So you weren't that excited about it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what else about that? Yeah, man, that's, um, yeah. that's a good thing. Just kind of speak like you're, like you're confident, like you're addressing somebody from a, a, dis a distance away, a small yeah, distance away. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Unless you're at a funeral or um, <laughs> something like or that. Or something like that, yeah. Uh, also, try to avoid clearing your throat. This has a tendency to, to irritate your throat. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Um, essentially, this is the act of slamming your vocal cords together. I so, don't like the way that sounds. Yeah, it already sounds bad, right? Uh, alternatively, have a sip of water or just swallow to avoid throat clearing. If you feel you're having to do this too much, maybe get checked or for acid reflux or for sinus allergy concerns or something. Yes, yeah. acid reflux will do a number on your vocal cords. Yeah. A lot I'd, of people have that. I tend to have a little bit of acid reflux sometimes, and I, I know it, it'll make me kind of want to cough when I don't really have to cough. It's just the reflux. And mm -hmm. and that, too, will sort of, is sort of doing is cla clattering your cords together. And Well, the one time I had acid reflux, I knew well enough not to... I had a bunch of margaritas with a lot of tequila in it and a lot of salsa one mm -hmm. night. And, man, that was one of the most uncomfortable I'd ever <laughs> been. And I yeah. knew well enough to know that... It, that I didn't want to do that again. So I've actually, well, all throughout my life, since that time 20 years ago, yeah. I pay attention to what I eat. Uh, good for you. I I, um, I have a soft spot for spicy food. Yeah. And, and every now and then it kind of uh, comes back to haunt me with the acid reflux. So, and But not uh, not enough for me to stop eating spicy food because I love spicy food. So. Mm -hmm. Well, you take a... Um, yeah. What, what else? Take, take a nice little time. This is why I'm not a singer. All of these reasons are why... <laughs> Some things are worth uh, worth doing, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some absolutely. Some things just taste too good. Gotta live. Gotta live. Um, when I was young, me and my brother had like, um, I, I got this from him. I think there was about a year where he would clear his throat a lot, just as a uh, nervous tick. Yeah. <clears throat> just always yeah. clearing his throat. And then I was doing that myself, and I found <laughs> myself doing that. And mom, at one point, she was like, "You too clear your throat a little bit too much. Why don't you <laughs> work on not clearing your throat as much?" <laughs> and I'm glad that I, that didn't take off. I'm glad that we were able to, you know. Yeah. Squash that. Yeah, yeah. Because I might not even be talking at all today. <laughs> my uh, my worst tick ever was the um. Um, yeah. And when I first started teaching, I had a real big um uh -huh. problem. Probably in some of the first episodes of the podcast, too. I was probably still doing a lot of um and uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. After editing a few of them, yes, I can say that. <laughs> That's like my so. so. So, yeah. But, you know, I used to, I used to edit a lot more of those out, but now I'm kind of... Uh, well, now we've become self-conscious about it just in our, while <laughs> well, we're recording. We self-edit. We self-edit, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's all for you guys, too. See what see what we go through? We want you to hear good stuff. Yeah, uh -huh. and good we want production. Jeremy to not have to spend three days editing every episode if we can help it. Well, that's true. Mm. Uh, also, when you are sick, spare your voice. Mm. Don't talk if you ha have to. Have you ever been that sick where it just kind of hurt to talk? Yeah. You know, and so you know, you, you, that's your body telling you, I'm not into this right now. You know, and maybe not talk any more than you have to. You know why this is a drag for me? Why? Because when I am sick, when I get into that shower, the first thing I want to do is sing some Barry White, some <laughs> Stan Rogers, Leonard Cohen. Oh, baby. Sa Sam Elliott. <laughs> <laughs> he's not a singer, but he's got a good, deep voice. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, that's what I want to do. But apparently I shouldn't be doing that. I should just shut the hell up. I'm, I'm totally with you. I want to break out the... And the typo negative and, and you know. <laughs> oh, God, that's going to hurt. Yeah, and, and, and the Barry White and the, the get down there. And, uh, yeah, apparently probably shouldn't do that. You know. But it's so much fun. It is. And I sound good in the shower. Yeah, we all sound good in the shower. We People ought to make concert halls out of the same material that they make at showers out of. <laughs> porcelain yeah, concert halls. Yeah, porcelain. Con why, why has nobody ever done this? <laughs> Anyway, anyway, but we digress. As we do. If speaking in public, make sure there's a PA system involved so you don't have to scream. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and this can this can be a big thing if you're talking to large audiences. Yep. Uh, classrooms, I don't feel the need, but 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 large audiences, yeah, they they don't mind giving you a PA. Let you know, ask them for a PA. Yes. You know, have Why have not? some kind of microphone. You know. Or even funner, a bullhorn. <laughs> Because it's just cooler to have a bullhorn yeah. everywhere you go. And, and people tend to yell into a bullhorn anyway. So the <laughs> yelling, and that is getting amplified. It's right? true. What is with yeah. that? I've... That's the whole point of the bullhorn. So you don't have, so to, you yell. Don't have to yell. People yeah. yell into bullhorns. Uh, and that's when you get the feedback from the bullhorn. Mm -hmm. you know, and, uh, but there you go. And, and finally, uh, back to hydration. Uh, try to regulate the humidity levels in your home and in your studio and... I guess pretty much anywhere where you think you're going to have to sing mm -hmm. you know, or be for a long time. Try to regulate those. Don't let it get too sticky. Don't yeah. let it get too dry. Yeah. You know. It's all back to regulating. This is, yeah, this is this is something we said for your in string instruments, yes, too. Yes, we did. Right? Regulate the humidity. Keep it sort of on an even keel. So should you do for your cello, so should you do for your voice. Yeah. Yes, indeed. 
I want to go back uh, real quick, back to uh, speaking in public, because mm -hmm. I, I kind of want to mention, uh, kind of know how to use the microphones you're speaking into. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you see those little, there's called the SM58, that little shore mic that has a little mesh ball on the top of it. Yeah. Most mics like that are considered dynamic microphones. Uh -huh. You really want to get up there and as close as your lips can get to, without touching it, because people, you know, rock people. Slobber all Slobber over. Slobber and it. sneeze and go, whatever. You want to get as close as you can. So if you if you're up there and you're talking, you can't hear yourself. You might be you might be because you're even five six inches away, where you need to be like two inches away. Yeah. So maybe just a little variation on your, your on your proximity to the mic will make all the difference, and you won't have to. And sometimes yeah. the podium will have this little gooseneck, little black gooseneck microphone with yeah. a tiny little foam thing on it. Yeah. You can have a little more freedom with those things. It's a condenser mic. You can usually turn your head or be more than you know. About a foot at the most away from it. Yeah. I'd still get right up in there. Yeah. You know? Secondary lesson, know your microphones. Know your microphones. <laughs> if public speakers should know their microphones, I imagine there's public speakers who have writers that suggest they only use certain kinds of microphones. Probably you know so. I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So, All right. Well, so those are some considerations. Yes, sir. We have others. We do. We covered a lot of good habits, and some of those things we discussed covered some bad habits, but I'm yeah. going to kind of... Um, finish some of these ideas off here, okay? Okay. Because we did talk about smoking, right? Mm-hmm. But a new thing that's been going on... That, with the kids uh, these days. With the kids these days is vaping. Mm. Basically, what you're doing is you're inhaling smoke machine stuff. Mm, vapor. Um, this is an article I read uh, from vapingdaily.com. Mm -hmm. So you would think that they would do anything they could to <laughs> support vaping. Right. Although, when asked... And this article is How Vaping and Smoking Can Affect Your Vocal Cords mm -hmm. by Jeffrey Buckley. When asked, is vaping less harmful for your vocal cords than smoking? His answer is, even though the initial response to the question is yes, the overall answer is not that simple. E-cigarettes contain less harmful ingredients than regular cigarettes. However, that does not mean that they are 100% safe without any side effects. So depending on quality and contents of different vape juices and e -cigarette, even e-cigarettes, can cause considerable damage to one's vocal cords. In addition, it can impede an individual's ability to use their voice properly. Mm. So it sounds to me like, well, obviously you don't get the heat and the carcinogens from cigarette smoke. Right. Um, but it does it does nothing really good for your vo vocals. Yeah, certainly doesn't do anything good. No. And even while it may be less harmful than regular cigarettes, that doesn't mean not harmful. Yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of the deal on vaping. Uh, we also talked about caffeine and alcohol mm -hmm. and how they can dehydrate, dehydrate your voice. And yourself in general. And yourself in general. Um, but we didn't really talk about this temperature thing, mm. you know? You kind of want to stay away from extreme temperatures. Hot, hot coffee. Yeah. Cold ice water. Yeah. Uh, especially if you're about to sing, the cold water tends to, um, you know, you want your vocal folds to be loose. Yeah, yeah. And they may kind of stiffen up. Yeah. When they, yeah. When you're when you when you're exposed to cold temperatures, your muscles mm -hmm. kind of contract a little bit to yeah. stay warm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you don't want that going on when you're about to sing. So to keep it luke temp, keep it uh, room temp or lukewarm if you can. Mm. Um, and that's to, regardless of whatever you're drinking. Mm. Okay, now here's one that kind of blew my mind, Matt. Mm -hmm. Don't whisper. Wow. Yeah. This is a little tip I picked up from Haley, and then I looked it up and did some research on it, and sure enough, uh, it's a thing. Uh, when you produce, in order to produce a whisper, you have to kind of squeeze your vocal cords together mm -hmm. and strain them, and that can be kind of traumatic to your vocal cords. Yeah. So um, when you actually think you're saving yourself from being too loud, yeah. you're really doing or, or saving your vocal cords. Yeah. Yeah. You're actually doing more damage by whispering. Huh. You, you want to know why this bothers me? Because some of my favorite things is like, a, there's a thing called the whisper scream. <laughs> And uh, any time, any Ben Stiller movie, if you've seen a Ben Stiller movie, you've seen the uncomfortable moment where he's had to yell at somebody, but he had to, he had to whisper it. He's like, I told you. Da, 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 da. you know? <laughs> <laughs> and to me, that's the funniest thing. Larry David, good whisper yeah. scream. Yeah. Uh -huh. Ross from Friends, whisper scream. Yes. Anyone put into those uncomfortable situations. I just think that's just one of the funniest things. I, I, you know, I don't know why I get such a kick out of the whisper scream. Uh, Kevin James. Oh, huh? that's some good uh, King of Queens. Oh, good, yeah, okay. Good whisper screaming. <laughs> but With all the characters involved on that show. Well, certainly don't whisper, and certainly, certainly don't, don't whisper, whisper scream. scream. 
Unless that's your thing. I mean, Ben Stiller probably makes a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he, yeah, he could, he yeah. could probably afford uh, the voice there. To not have to sing for a while. Yeah. Yeah. Um, finally, there's a little, this, there's been a couple of places where I've seen mention about gluten and dairy. Mm. Yep. Because they have been known to kind of produce or thicken the mucus in your throat. Yeah. And this can be problematic. Um, however, I couldn't find a whole lot of support for that, so... Other than sites trying to sell you some kind of a non gluten thing, or? yeah, some yeah. So I'm not a hundred percent sure. I want to go around preaching against gluten. I think yeah. on a maintenance level, maybe. Yeah, maybe it's just a personal thing. If you feel like it, you can't sing after you've had gluten or dairy. Then don't then don't do it. Well, different people's biochemistry reacts differently to different amounts of dairy and to gluten. So right. If you're one of those people that you find yourself very mucusy with dairy and gluten, then obviously you don't want to do that the day of a concert. Right. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. But I think all in all, it's not like you have to quit eating bread and drinking milk. Yeah. To let's, be a hope not, let's hope not. Let's hope not. Because that's what we drink when it's what eat and drink when it snows. <laughs> what would we do? <laughs> We'd starve. We would starve. Eat snowballs. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. It's, it snows down here like significantly snows like once every three to six years. Mm -hmm. Just Something, often enough for us to forget what to do when it happens. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, just right at that interval where we have no flipping clue. We don't remember what we did last time or anything, and <laughs> everybody completely freaks out. Yeah. And. Milk and bread will disappear from the from the grocery store shelves at, at like record time when they say it's about to snow. Yeah, and I guess people think those things are perishable. I guess so. That's what's up with that. But you know, I always wonder if they're going home and making milk sandwiches or you yeah. know, or they're dipping their bread in the milk to to survive the snowstorm or, or what's good. It's hilarious. It's not 1903. But yeah, I. It, it's hilarious, guys. If you ever come to the south. And, and you get to and, and they they forecast no it's it's yeah you'll, you you will laugh heartily at us we have no idea it's a thing it, yeah it is a thing it is a thing of course you know we will laugh at you when it's 105 degrees in July yes we will but it's still it's still funny okay now this last one the 12 year old and me kind of wants, wanted to address this I was just curious okay. Uh, the 40, the 42 year old in me, which I, I'm actually 42 years old and I have many friends the same age who belch with, uh, they'll do the alphabet at 120 <laughs> decibels and we'll all laugh at it <laughs> as much as I can't stand potty humor as I call <sighs> it. And, um, I wonder if, if that would be damaging, but uh, apparently the act of belching is not so bad. Right. Because it, it involves more the stomach and the esophagus. The esophagus. Right? So that flapping. Does. His gas escaping from the esophagus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So no matter, you could just belch away. All right, uh, good. Unless, unless there's acid reflux. Exactly. Right? Yeah, so okay. sometimes when people do that, acid acid comes up from the stomach, and that can be again very bad for your vocal cords. Right. Yeah. So. Um, All right. That's we have some, learned a lot. Yeah, we have. We have. We covered a lot, and uh, I guess just a quick recap. Okay. If you will, I mean. All right. I don't feel as inclined to do these on the. Um, the episodes where we're just kind of doing research and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. But whatever. It's been requested before, so we'll just do it <laughs> real quick. Um, going back to the anatomy. Mm -hmm. uh, again, there's three main systems. I, 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 I say four. We said four, yeah. Uh, the air pressure system being the lungs, diaphragm, chest muscles, abdominal muscles. The vibratory system, which is the voice box, the glottis, and the vocal folds. Uh -huh. That's actually making the sound by vibrating so many times a second. Right. And then there's the resonating system, which kind of gives your throat, your your voice, its actual sound, color, tem timbre, as we mm, call it, mm -hmm. uh, which is the throat, oral cavity, and nasal passages, right? Right. To and, which we added. To which we added the fourth system, which I would say is the articulation. Your lips, your tongue, your teeth, mm -hmm. how you shape um, yeah. your mouth cavity, how you right. shape the words, and, yeah. and so forth. Okay. Some of the key things to keep in mind as far as taking care of your voice, it seems like the number one thing is hydration. Hydration. Yeah. yeah. Try and replenish whatever you drink in alcohol and coffee with... Uh, yeah, with equal parts water. Equal parts water. Yeah. Don't smoke. Don't smoke. That's probably don't vape. Probably don't vape. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just not good. Uh, I know a lot of people have claimed to have wheezing problems when they vape. A yeah, lot. I'm... I can imagine. You don't imagine that would be good for your vo singing voice either. No. In general, pay attention to what your voice is doing, mm -hmm. what your neck and throat muscles are doing. If they, if it feels irritated, it is. Mm -hmm. You know, um, 
uh, pay attention to how you speak every day. Yes. You know, if you're irritating your, vo your voice in speaking every day, then, you know, you should probably not do that as much. Mm -hmm. uh, spare your voice when you're sick. Mm. Uh, you know, um, use a PA if you're speaking in public and need it. Know the microphones. Know the microphones. How to get a good sound out of them without screaming into them. Yeah, and try to stay in uh, sort of even humidity level environments. Yeah. You know, just like with your cello or your guitar, you know, your vocal cords don't like lots of humidity or, no, or not a lot of humidity. They like an even keel. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And uh, what else, man? I think... Uh... That pretty well covers it, you know. Don't whisper. Try not to. Don't whisper. Clearing yeah. your throat, not cool. Clearing your throat, not cool. Belching, on the other hand. Go nuts. Yeah, go, uh, go nuts. <laughs> doesn't doesn't bother it at all. Except some people find it crude. Uh, yeah, Jeremy finds it crude. Find your proper so, venue. Uh, if your your yeah. kids will love it. <laughs> I loved it as a kid. I'm sure you did too, Matt. Yeah, I'm going to belch at Jeremy all the time now, now that I know he doesn't like it. Watch that uncomfortable look on my face. <laughs> God, man, I thought you were a doctor. Oh, God. <laughs> Scholar. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Uh, the things we learn about ourselves and each other. Yeah, no, no kidding, man. This has been such a fun episode. You got to hear me make, got to hear both of us make ridiculous sounds. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, uh, but uh, we will uh, be back soon with more instrument care stuff. Yes, yes, indeed. Uh, we will be back soon with more uh, theory stuff, of course. We're going to try and cover it all. Yeah, yes, indeed. And um, just other cool stuff in general. So keep listening. Keep on listening. Thanks again, guys. Uh... Thanks for listening and try some of these vocal tips and techniques and see if it makes a difference for you. And don't forget, you can support us at patreon.com slash musicstudent101. And for questions or comments, email us at info at musicstudent101.com. <laughs>